Now, if you're familiar with the Homestead robberies or Strauss's optional debt collections in Chapter 4 onwards, then there's a very good chance that you are familiar with the location known as Catfish Jackson's, home of Algy Davison and his son, Nate, who unfortunately have borrowed money from Leopold Strauss. Still working, Mr. Strauss. What you been up to? Trying to wrap up our accounts before we leave, Mr. Morgan. So you'll be joining us in Tahiti? I uh, rather fancied Australia. A similar kind of people to us. Lots of opportunity. That tells me we're going to be ranchers. Perhaps, but uh, so far we have not raised many cattle. No. So, Mr. Morgan, will you help me finalize our business here? <coughs> this is filthy work. We'll need money in Australia. Uh, for cattle and feed, I mean. Why flinch now? You never have done before. I don't know. Well, here they are. Some fishermen by the name of Davison, Algy Davison, living in a place called Catfish Jackson near Scarlet Meadows. A fisherman. And that's it. We're a union built on that, you know. Okay. So then we'll be set to the location known as Catfish Jackson's, which is south of Braithwaite Manor, which as we all know is south of Rhodes. Slightly southwest of Shady Bell, which is the camp location in Chapter 4, which shouldn't be too difficult to find. It will have a mission marker on it anyway during this debt collection mission. When you arrive at the location, you will be met by a house. You will be unable to get into the house at this point. But since Strauss told us that Davison's profession was a fisherman, let's check by the waterfront. Hey! You better have a damn good reason for being on my property, mister. You remember that loan you took, Mr. Davison? Well, time's long since up. I'm here to collect. Oh, I should have known. You goddamn bludgeon men are all the same. Sure, I'm sure I got your money. Every stinking cent. It's in the house. Hell, I'll even offer you a drink. We can toast to never laying eyes on each other again. You take my money, surely you take a drink off me as well. That would be the manly thing to do. Let's us uh, handle the money first. Worry about manners later, okay? I could be fishing. You were catching flies, you weren't catching fish. Now come on, let's get us that debt. This is as fast as I can go. Before we continue, it's worth pointing out that it's very obvious that Algy Davison is not sober at this point. And he also seems adamant on offering us a drink, which is a little bit unusual considering we're there to collect a debt. Someone's here, boy. Oh. Wait, what's going on? Don't just stand there. Go fix us a drink. Another one, Pop? Don't give me no talk, boy. Just do it. I'll look down here for our savings. If you're sharp enough, you'll notice that there is a knife in this cupboard. Savings? Under the sink? Best place for them. Hmm. Now where's them drinks, boy? Drinks ready. It's right there, miss. At this point, we'll be provided with the option to take the drink, so I do suppose that is what we must do. It's our life savings. Come and shouldn't have turned your back on me, you parasite. This is my. I should have to come for you. Ah! <laughs> Mr. Davison attacks us, and his son runs off and hides under one of the beds in one of the bedrooms. Surprisingly, he didn't go for the knife to stab Arthur, which would have been a much more efficient way to kill. Which, of course, in my mind was an error made due to being absolutely shit-faced. Of course, upon inspection, you will notice that there is in fact no money under the sink. I don't know if you can pick up the knife, it didn't work for me, however, but let's go find that money. Don't hurt me, alright? By the bed which Nate Davison is hidden under, inside the chest, you will find the money that you're after. All that's left is to finish this family. And that's a cover it. Ain't you the good son? Should be proud of you. <laughs>
Now there's a couple of variations on what could happen afterwards at this place, depending on what you do here. But before we get onto that, in the other bedroom you will find a letter from Nate Davison's mother. Dearest Nate, I don't know how many letters I've written now, but I won't stop trying. Even the act of writing feels like some connection to you, which is certainly better than none. I can understand how hurt and angry you must be for walking out on you like I did, but I promise that I love you with all my heart. I just couldn't take it a day longer. You know your father's temper, especially when he was drinking, which was all the time at the end. I've found work and I'm renting a small house. Just give me the word and I will send for you. We can both start again. Love always. Mama. And now you understand why British people use U's instead of O's in mum. It just rolls better off the accent. And we're correct. Fight me. Now there are a few variations on what could happen if you do return here. For example, if you do what I did and killed Nate Davison, but not kill Algy. If you return here before the end of chapter 6, you will find Algy become vengeful and attack you. If you kill Algy but not Nate and then return a few days later in 1899, Nate will be armed with the knife and will attack you. Regardless of what you do, Algy will be dead by 1907. If you don't kill Nate, he will become a drunkard just like his father. Now when it comes to the epilogue, there are several variations on how you can find him depending on the time of day that you arrive at his home but it's quite obvious that he's become paranoid towards all visitors. Then of course there's what happened to me, which was that he didn't show up at all. However, courtesy of doing research, aka watching other people's videos, I have concluded that yes, you can indeed find various different scenarios if you return here in 1899 or 1907. Next to the house there is a shed. It would be a shame to wrap up this video without at least investigating this a little bit. Inside you'll find a table with three seats and a stool under it, and what appears to be a couple of poker cards on the table. There are a couple of premium cigarette packs in here, so definitely come Come here to get some cigarette cards and of course there's a cigar and a couple of bottles of alcoholic beverages laying about which furthers the point that our friend Algie Davison is a drunkard. Beyond that, there's not really too much to that shed. Like I said, you don't just visit this place as a part of Leopold Strauss's debt collection mission as you can come here and rob the place. This is what you'll be met by if you do that. I reckon you had enough, Pa. Enough? All I had enough of is you. We ain't had food in the keep for weeks. Oh, well, you ain't a babe in the crib no more. You full grown now, boy. Stop pulling in your pieces. You would only gamble or piss it. What the hell are you doing here? Nate, go to your room. Yes, pal. Get on. No, please don't kill me. Take whatever you want. Just, just leave. Tell me where you keep the money or I swear I'll kill you right there. The chimney. It's in the chimney, just please don't hurt me. I know, I'm evil. On the mantelpiece above the chimney, you will notice a shotgun. There is also a portrait of what probably is Nate's mother, and in the chimney you will find $50. But the insight that this gives us is that Algie Davison gambles away all their money, and so they can't afford to buy food. However, they have $50 in the chimney, so just use that to buy food. It appears as if Catfish Jackson's is a location where you can find a useless kid and his useless dad, who's an angry drunk, and Mrs. Davison, whoever she was, has left them. But I think that concludes today's video on Catfish Jackson's as it's just a prime example of all the attention to detail that went into Red Dead Redemption 2. Before we do go, I just want to say a special thank you to Bank who sent me this monitor. It's really bloody awesome. I'm sure I'll make a more in-depth video, like a setup video going into 2020 or something, but for now you're going to hear me saying a lot of praise for this lovely old monitor. But of course, please do let me know what you think about this location down in the comments section. Is there anything I've missed, for example? Or maybe there are other locations that you'd like me to investigate. This one turned into a bigger tin of worms than I ever expected, so I'm sorry. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends with all that wonderful stuff. That would be really appreciated. And I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.